have been to several colloquiums and conferences and I can tell you proudly that you are the perhaps the legatees of a proud legacy, a proud legacy of a complicated, complex, sophisticated legal system. I say sophisticated because when I hear some of the judges narrate their pitiful stories of their very perhaps the primitive legal systems, I can assure you that we practice here a fine blend of the Roman Dutch law and the English law, which has a fine synthesis of a legal system that perhaps we can be proud of. Then, then really it is surprising that we can run into heavy weather having such a sophisticated legal system. That's what then is what is wrong. What, what then is wrong with the system? I think the, the remedy is pretty simple. I have identified to you the causes. I think the, the remedy is pretty easy. The remedy is in our hands. Are we willing to give our time and our energies to getting the legal system off the ground to those levels of progress and efficiency that we all like to see? So therefore, I must say that the Judicial Service Commission has also decided to introduce a new system to evaluate the performance of judges. The delay in writing judgments will be a crucial factor in the evaluation of performance. Even the legal fraternity may make representations to the JSC during the process of evaluation. We will not perhaps in the future have, Mr. Minister and Mr. President, automatic promotions from a magistracy to becoming a DJ. From a DJ to a High Court judge, from the High Court to the Court of Appeal and then to the Supreme Court. It won't be, it, it will not be based on how much of time you spend in the judiciary. It will, meritocracy will be considered. There will be an exit mechanism from one to another. There will be, an, then there won't be any question of a judge leaving behind judgments before he leaves one office to take up another. We have had a recent experience of having hundreds of judgments being left behind before going uh, to the next phase. There will be an evaluation, there will be an exit mechanism. And we will not hesitate to recommend that you actually leave the judiciary if you do not aspire to those standards that we think you have to achieve. So my dear friends, the contract is very clear. Your contract with the judiciary is that you live, that you conduct yourself as efficiently as you should in keeping with these principles that are laid down in the Code of Ethics and deliver, in other words, you live the life, a full life of a judicial officer. If you cannot do that, I say that it is time that you perhaps think of some other profession. We want, we want you to give your total time, total time to the judiciary. And when I say that, I, I do not mean at the expense of your family. I do not mean at the expense of your recreational time. I do not mean at the expense of perhaps your holidays, not at all. I do mean that when we, that amount of judicial time you spend must be given to the judiciary. We can't be picking our children up at 12.30 and close, sh shutting a court down. We cannot be coming back at 3.30 when everybody is ready to go home. We have to allocate that time, in other words, manage your time as efficiently as I can. I'm not driving you mad, I'm not trying to kind of be, trying to be difficult, no. I'm merely saying these are the standards that we like to see and I'm sure if you achieve 75% of what we are saying, we will be home and dry. So I have just, uh, as I told you, uh, the time has therefore come to upgrade knowledge and revamp not only the judiciary but also the legal system of the country. You know that we recently opened a dedicated family court which uh, uh, the, the judge today is carrying on very efficiently. Uh, I happened to actually sit at the back of your court one day, you didn't know that I was seated. Uh, and I thought the court was working very well. The congratulations. The, uh, we've opened a, ecclesiastic, a Buddhist ecclesiastical court. I even went and saw the traffic court. I sat at the back of it and I thought that was working pretty well apart from a little bit of touting that was going, going on outside. <laughs> but they actually ran in this army. Uh, so things are turning out well. We intend to start e-filing very soon. Yesterday, uh, we will start the pilot project very soon to do uh, electronic filing in just fundamental rights. That's for the reason that in fundamental rights, the pleadings are very 
very crisp and short. It's just a petition, counter affidavit, affidavit, and that's it. We'll probably start doing it in the other courts too. Uh, we'll start e-filing. And we have also considering uh, setting up a court for the execution of post-judgment orders, such as the execution of writs, uh, the execution of other orders made by the court, because I am told by the public that after a judgment is delivered and uh, the DJ washes his hands off the case, execution of judgment takes another few years, <clears throat> and that's becoming very expensive, tedious, and rather corrupt, I'm told. So we will dedicate a judge to do that. So as we go on, we will keep on fine-tuning whatever we do. We'll try our best to give you the resources you need. Uh, Secretary Treasury and Mrs. Gunwadhan, who is here, uh, told the World Bank in no uncertain terms that uh, if you throw peanuts, you get monkeys, and, uh, but if you th throw good resources, you get good returns. And they're willing to do that, and I'm sure as time goes on, we'll see a little more compensation, as uh, Patabendi was pleased to observe, uh, for the work that the hard work you are doing. Uh, you can be sure that I will be on your side 100%. Nine out of the ten petitions I receive, I throw in the waste paper basket, quite frankly. Nine out of ten I receive, I throw in the bin. I am 100% with you, I will be with you. Don't worry to do the right thing. You can be sure all of us in the Supreme Court and the JSC will be firmly behind you. But don't let us down. Don't let me down. If I was to, I will canvas your cause for you. I will stand by you. So long as you do the right thing and you have a good reason for doing what you did, I will be with you. I will not let you down. But I would probably privately tell you well, what the wrongs and right of what you have done. But certainly in public, I certainly will be with you. So you have that assurance that you should continue to do what you do fearlessly, independently, and according to your conscience, my dear friends. So therefore, uh, be assured that we will be with you. We, I, I will not play the role of a bloodhound. I am not actually made up of that. I will rather be, I will rather do things with you. After all, we are not, we are, we are, by virtue of our humanity, we are frail. We suffer from human frailty and we make mistakes time and again. And we know that. So therefore, be assured that all of us will be with you. We are all one family. And we have to help each other, guide each other, and sustain each other so that we can all get together and sustain the legal system. So therefore, uh, we seeds of great legal learning must keep pace with the development in the rest of the world. The complexity, I say, of the legal work and the variety of issues that come up in our courts show unmistakably that today, you know, international trade, commercial banking, uh, the WTA rules, international courts of arbitration, and intellectual property must be given pride of place. It is my view that all these matters can be taught at law school, as the Honorable Minister was pleased to observe. We have revamped law school for the reason that that being the cradle, the cradle of our legal system. We cannot afford to have babies born who are really not fit to take on the profession. Those babies actually have to be, those babes perhaps at law school, have to be molded in a way that will meet the requirements of the nation. And we intend to do that, and some serious measures have been taken, and I'm confident that uh, with the new mechanisms in place that we will succeed in doing that. So it is on this basis that we inculcate the modern lawyer and the thirst for these new subjects as we go on. And uh, I thought, I, th I think I have spoken enough, uh, and perhaps wind up on this note, wind up with the, with, by thanking you, by thanking you for the hard work you have done in 2013. We are appreciative of that, by thanking you. With all the difficulty, with all the bad courthouses, the leaking chambers, the bad cars, after all, not so good compensation as Patabendi puts it, but with all that, there appears to be a madness in all of us. Somebody asked me, what, why are you doing all this? You've left a fine practice. I said, there must be some madness in me. Which is true. There must be some madness in all of us perhaps to do this. It's not madness, I say. It's that some of us are chosen, perhaps, to offer this service. 
It's servitude that you offer. It's not kingship, it's not rulership. It's service. And the people of this country must thank you for doing what you're doing. So let me thank you on behalf of the system for doing what you have done in 2013 and tell you that the rewards will be much greater in 2014 if you join hands with me in partnership in driving this system to the excellence that we would like to see. May I wish you, uh, perhaps to those of you who celebrate Christmas, a very happy Christmas, uh, the compliments of the season, a great new year, and the blessings of the Triple Gem and God Almighty in this great godly, divine, monastic uh, mandate that has been given to you so that you will do your best in the future and that we can look to a better legal system in 2014. Thanks for giving me a patient hearing and thank you very much once again. Thank you.